Hallelujah. Oh my God. Thank you, Papa. Thank you, sir, for this privilege, this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you for being such a blessing. You are, I have, I'm so privileged I, I, for drinking from the well. Your well, your well, your well, your well of wisdom. Today we have drank and drank and drank. Every day we keep drinking and drinking and drinking. You don't get tired. You don't get weary. You keep blessing. You keep blessing. You are, you are a consistent man. You are the best Papa ever. Ah, anybody that does not have you as a papa has not started. You are the best gift God has given to me. Mwah. Church, you are here looking at me. You're not celebrating papa. If you know that he's such a gift, not just to us, but the generation, the world at large, let's celebrate our papa. The sacrifices every day, every night, ceaselessly. Hey, papa will love you. Can someone shout, Papa, we love you? Have you said Happy New Year to Papa this year? Say Happy New Year, Papa. Have you blown Papa a kiss in 2021? <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh my God. Please, let's open our Bibles to Ruth. Ruth chapter 1, verses 1 to 5. We are looking at today, New Year's wisdom for families. And I believe and I pray that God will speak to each and every one of us. That none of us will live here the same way. Amen. Our families will be saved because we are here. Let's read Ruth chapter 1 verses 1 to 5 together. Okay. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land. And a certain man of Bethlehem Judah went to sojourn in the country of Moab. He and his wife and his two sons. And the name of the man was Elimelech. And the name of his wife Naomi. And the name of his two sons, Malon and Chilon, Ephratites of Bethlehem, Judah. And they came into the country of Moab and continued there. And Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died. And she was left and her two sons. And they took them wives of the women of Moab. The name of the one was Opa and the name of the other Ruth. And they dwelt there about ten years. And Malon and Chilon died also, both of them. And the woman was left of her two sons and her husband. Please, before you sit down, let's read verse 1 in HCSB. Or HSCB. Anyone? HC. Uh -huh. Okay. Let's read it together. During the time of the judges, there was a farmer in the land. A man left Bethlehem in Judah with his wife and two sons to live in the land of Moab. How long did he go to stay there? Just for a while, please sit down in the presence of God. The scripture is such a blessing. I know we have heard so much about the scripture. And already you have a posture or a position as it has to do with what happened here. But for the first time, my heart went out to Elimelech. I have never felt pity for a man before. As much as I felt for Elimelech of recent. And um, why did I feel for Elimelech? And why is this scripture so appropriate today? Because we are talking about families and we are talking about the New Year's wisdom that our families need to run with in 2021. Elimelech was a father. He was a husband. He was the head of a home. He had a wife and he had two sons. Whatever it is you think you know about him, please let's put it aside. But let's place him in contemporary day. Today's society. Maybe you are here, you are like him, you are married, and you have children. Now, the Bible tells us that there was famine in the land. There was, there was lack. There was, there was nothing in the land. The land was barren. And this man, in a bid to help his family, in a bid to provide for his family, after all, in the New Testament, the Bible tells us that... Uh, how does the Bible talk about it? He says that uh, any man that cannot take care of his own, especially his household, is worse than an infidel. So Elimelech, I believe, must have come from that part, from that place of, Kai, I need to provide for my home. I can't provide for my wife. I can't provide for my sons. I need to provide for them. So what did he do? He started looking for what? Green pastures. But my worry was that the Bible says during the time of the judges, there was a famine in the land. A man left Bethlehem in Judah with his wife and two sons to live in the land of Moab for a while. 
It was a temporary plan. It wasn't a permanent move. He migrated with his family, not because he wanted to stay there forever. Let's just go to a different place for a little while and just see how things will go. But my worry, my first worry in this scripture is that I did not see where Elimelech prayed. I didn't see where Elimelech asked God. Maybe if Elimelech had said, God, do I go? Maybe he wouldn't have made the mistakes he made. Elimelech, the Bible just say he just packed his things. The Bible not even say pack. He just, he must have been packed. Just carry his things. Oh yeah, let us move. And they moved. And I remember another man in the Bible, David. The Bible says that in Ziglar, when he was in Ziglar, and the Amalekites had come, and they had burned Ziglar, and they had taken their wives, their sons, and their daughters. David came, to, came back to Ziglar, saw everywhere burnt, and he cried. The people wanted to stone him. David, a mighty man of valor, with mighty men around him, he didn't say, oh yeah, let us start going. David went and inquired of the Lord. He asked God, do I pursue? Will I overtake? And the Lord said, pursue, overtake, and you without fail, recover all. He got a word from God. It was his wife. Two of his wives were among them. Ahinoam and um, Abigail. They were the two wives. So they, his wives were taken. His emotions was not what was ruling him at that point in time. He needed to hear what God would say first. In 2021, family man, family woman, please don't do anything outside the will of God. And what I mean is you must stop and pause and ask God, do I go? Do I move? Should I stay? You must ask God questions. You must get clear-cut directions. Why am I saying this? This is 2021. January, this is the womb of the year. We have so many plans. The Bible says many are the plans in a man's heart. But the counsel of the Lord will prevail. So right now as you're sitting here, there are a thousand and one plans in your heart. But if the Bible says that it's the counsel of the Lord that will prevail, meaning that it's of no use us running, at, running faster than God. Because at the end of the day, it's God's will that we still stand. So it's better we just, instead of wasting time beating around the bush, let us just go first and get the clarity we need so that when we strike, when we shoot, we shoot right. So please, that is what, that's the first thing I want us to have or not have at the back of our mind. Secondly, the Bible tells us, please, even me and you, you know famine. Famine is not a good thing. But where uh, Elimelech was looking at looked very promising. Oh, Moab looked good. Some historians say, some historians say that these people, that's the Bethlehem Judah, Israelites, and the Moab, they were to some extent friendly because they were all living around the same neighbor, neighboring place. So, you know, this man must have just looked at that place. Say, ah, this place looks good. Let me just go there. Just for a little while. And that was why he went. It looked good. It looked like a good idea. It looked like a good reason. Brethren, family man, woman, this is not that year. It is not every good idea that has the signature of God on it. In 2021, not every good idea, good reason, strong reason has the backing of God. Are you hearing me? I want you to know that most times when we put our good idea beside what we are currently operating on, at times that your good idea looks better than where you are now. But that doesn't mean God is in it. I hope you understand. If he put Moab side by side, Bethlehem, Judah, Moab looked good, but God's, God's backing, God's signature was not in Moab for him. And that's the same way at times. That thing you're thinking of doing, that business, that career, that venture, it looks good. That man that is coming for you to sign that contract deal, it looks good. It looks promising. The money looks good. Oh, if I do this, this works, and this one, that one, that one. But is it, does he have the backing of God? Is God in it? So not every good idea is from God. You know, some of us, the way we judge whether God is in a thing, is when maybe when we find, when there's no opposition. When there's no opposition, just say, hey, God's hand is in it. Elimelech, there was no opposition when he was going. Nobody stopped him. Unlike the scripture Papa preached to us in first service. At least the angel stood and did not allow uh, Balaam to move with the donkey. But this one, he had a free access. 
So he could have said, ah, God is in it. Some of us are like that here. Is that not? When things just go smoothly, we say, God's hand is in it. When things don't go smoothly, we say, God's hand is not in it. I have also seen some people say, when things don't go smoothly, that's when they know God is in it because of the opposition. I, I'm, I'm saying, I'm sure you are here. I won't tell you to raise your hand so that your neighbor doesn't know. But, you know, that's not how we are going to operate in 2021. We are not going to operate that way. Okay, when he moves like this is God. No, 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 no. That's not what we're going to do in 2021. So for him, that was how he took or made a decision. Not every good idea has the backing of God. And oh, if Elimelech was alive today, if Elimelech, if I had the opportunity to ask Elimelech a question, I would have asked him, Elimelech, would you have gone to, Ma uh, to, to Moab? I'm sure he would have told me, no. I wouldn't have gone. But why did he go? He did not know. He couldn't see the end. He couldn't see the future. The good idea looked good, but he did not know what was behind the good. In 2021, there are a lot of things that are going to be look good, but you must be a man of discernment. Papa has been talking about discernment. You must be able to see behind that good picture. Behind that smile, they are smiling. After all, the Bible says that the heart of man is desperate, wicked. Who can know it? Please. Not all that glitters they say is gold. And you know, stories we have heard. Can you remember? You know, I, I really want to bring this down to parents. You see, in parenting, in 2021, we must be very discerning. Where are you sending your children to? That school looks like a good school. But you know that there are some schools your children should never go to in their life. There are some people your children should never meet in their life. No, no, no. I mean there are people that your children and their parents should never cross. But if you don't know, you will be the one to actually help their parents cross by putting them in the wrong school that they should never have been to. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. I can use myself as an example. I was growing up in secondary school. I did GS1 in a particular place. I knew the friends I had made in my GS1. If I stayed and did my secondary school there, who I would have become at the end of the day, only God knows. But one day my father woke up and said, he's moving me. And he moved me all the way from Osuka to Calabar. As in, he just, he didn't even know the friends I had, but there was a disconnect. That disconnect helped my destiny. And because I was disconnected that way, now when, I now, when I was going to school and finish school, I look at those, my very close friends, and I discover that, hey, it was God that used this man to spare me. Even to, and I want to talk to even people that are, maybe you're still young and your parents take decisions for you. When I was in university, before I entered university, I used to pray and tell God. I would tell him, my father does not know you. But whatever decision he's going to take on my behalf, let it be your will for my life. Very, very, very profound. I don't know who taught me that prayer. Even to entering university, where I grew up in Osuka, usually campus kids, you must go through, you, you, must, you must go to campus. It's usually, it's like, it's like a thing. That's the, you must go to that university, UNN. But for some reason, me, when it was time to go to school, that's the same way he came back. Carried me and put in Abia State University. At that time, I did not even know that there was a place called Abia State. Talk more of university there. They say Uturu. Where is Uturu in the map? I had no idea where that was from. But if I didn't go there, I wouldn't have met Papa. Yes. Uh -huh. Maybe another woman will be sitting beside him. <laughs> hey, because my third chance came but the, the angel didn't find me that's what it would have been but that was a decision without him knowing that was divinely orchestrated that's, that's the prayer when I say even telling God my parents take decisions but speak through them use them so that I will not walk outside the will of God <laughs> discernment is important please there are people okay 
there was a story I heard, which um, um, that was years ago. It was Mommy Funke that told us that story about a girl that was in her house. Her parents said she was not going to go out that day, and they insisted she won't go. Her friend came and kept begging, begging, begging her to go out, and she now decided to go. The, the parents now finally said, "Okay, go." They now released her to go. They went out. They went to a beach. This was abroad. They went to a beach, something like that, and that's how weather wave or whatever came from where. Did not pick the girl that was disturbing scenes for her to come. The one that her parents have been saying, don't go, don't go. That's the one that we've carried. And that's how the girl died. Disappeared. They never found her body. This can't they say divine. This is it the exchange. Exchange taken. Because if this other girl went alone, at least let her water carry her. But you, eh, you that was sitting in your house, do you think the parents can forgive themselves? Because they, they, they had it. There was something telling them, don't, don't allow her go down. But they just released her and she never came back. Our choices are very important. The things that we are choosing for our children, how we are choosing, we must be careful. We must be wary. Okay, isn't it in, in, on NSPPD that we heard a story about uh, the girl that said it was her auntie that made her sleep with her brother. That's the auntie's brother. Have sex with him at seven years old. Then, by, she, she now started having such thoughts. By the time she got to 13, it became worse. She now slept with her younger brother. She slept with her younger brother. She was age 32 or so when we're reading her, now, when she, we're reading her testimony. And she said how even in the workplace, she would carry bottle, carry cucumber, carry carrot to go to the toilet just to make herself feel good. And my question is, where was her mother? Where was her father? How did an auntie enter the house and do that? How did she sleep with her sibling and they did not know? Some of you here, you have such stories. Your own may not be like this. But there are things you did as a child. If your parents heard, they would die. But they have become our secrets. We cannot parent like that this year. God forbid that we'll be the ones to use our hand to destroy. This is uh, Elimelech. He used his hand to destroy the future of his children. That's how destiny ended for them. All of them had premature death. There was more to their lives. When he moved them from that place, I believe they were young. Because they still had to stay another 10 years before they got married. So probably they couldn't make the decision for themselves that you were not going. So they had to go with him. Wherever you are, just say, Lord. Just say, Lord. In this 2021, give me a discerning heart. Clothe me with a garment of discernment in the name of Jesus. You know, in this story, another thing that blesses me or strikes me so much is the thing about your environment. Elimelech was in an environment. The environment, yes, was a place that, you know, famine. So there, there was lack. There was barrenness. And he found himself in that kind of environment. I don't have a problem with Elimelech being in that environment. But the problem I have is what the environment made him do. In 2021, please don't let your environment determine how you will react. Let it not control you. It was the environment that made him walk out. He just didn't like it, so he walked out. This is not that season, this is not that year that your environment will have control over you. We must become people. You will understand that, see you, I can be in this environment, but you see what well, this environment will not affect me. And you see 2021, Papa said something about 2021. He said, eh, there will be darkness in Egypt, but there will be light in Goshen. It depends on where you now want to build your own tent. Am I going to stay in Egypt or am I in Goshen? But remember that even the people in Goshen in the time that, uh, in, in the time the Israelites were there, remember that they were hearing the cries of the people in Egypt, meaning that they were in the environment where something bad was happening. But for some reason, God had just put a mark around them that he didn't touch them. So they heard it. They saw it. They saw the bad things happening to Egyptians. But it was not coming near them. Psalms 91. When we read 7 to 10. Media 7 to 10. Psalms 91. The Bible will tell us. Media, a thousand shall fall well at thy side. Ten thousand were at thy right hand. But it shall not do what come nigh thee. 
Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made a Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil. So no matter how bad, bad is, evil will not befall you. Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. This is that season that we are going to hold on to God's word. Mother, father, please give your children memory verse every day. You see, this 2021 is not business as usual. Even as they are reading memory verse, you to read, read the memory verse. Mother, father, read it. We must pump ourselves with a lot of words of the word of God. So that no matter what happens around us, Goshen, there will always be light. Where is the light coming? The light is also going to come from within us. Because no matter how dark the environment is, when we open our mouth, light keeps coming out. We keep releasing the word of God to the environment. We keep speaking the mind of God. There's no how you can speak all these things you don't become it. Remember, the word of God is the spirit, it's the life. So we are going to fill our hearts. Give them memory verse. Find one verse. No matter even the small one, four years old. Give memory verse. Three years old. Find Jesus wept. Let them say. Let them say. Find small, small. They are learning ABC in school. They can learn memory verse. That is the difference between us and the Muslims. You see, they are chicken, 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 chicken. They will carry them inside and be teaching them. They start very early. We will say we are waiting for them to grow. But you know what Papa used to tell us in supernatural parenting? We are not speaking to these physical bodies. They are spirits. Their spirit is not baby. There's no baby spirit that they are carrying like. There's no angel holding your child as a baby. Baby, sleep. No. That is why you will see small children physically. If they tell you where they have gone to in the spirit, for those of us that do deliverance, you, you, have, not, you, you have not started. That's their, their kakraka. Old people in the spirit, small child, nine years old, the, the person is in their 80s in the spirit. So the spirit is the spirit you're talking to. Teach them. This is what we're going to do this season. Then I want to say this. This one touches me so much. Elimelech did not understand that the decision he was taking concerning his family was not just going to affect him, but it's going to affect all those connected to him. In 2021, please know, family man, woman, young man, girl, please know that for every decision you are taking, it's not just about you. There are people connected to you. It will affect them. It will affect them. If you take a positive decision, it will affect people positively. If you take a negative one, it will affect them negatively. This is not that year you'll be selfish. Oh. I'm going to do it the way I like. I'm going to do what I like. No, nothing you like. That thing you like, when it shows in the next generation, it will not just be the way you did it. And I want to look at the place of sin. This is not that year, man, father, that you'll be sleeping around. Please, because of your children. It's not because of you. Because of your children. The destinies of your children. That decision to sleep around, look at David. David said, let him, just one day, one day, he just, out of weakness, just looked out, lazy, sitting down, reclining, enjoying, looked out, saw a fine woman, and said, yeah, come. Now slept with her. Now killed her husband. Everything was done quietly. Only servants knew. Nobody knew. But God knew. There's other thing you're hiding. Your wife does not know. Your children don't know. God knows. He's the one that is writing the report. Even for the women, please, this is not just for men. So as he finished doing what he did and thought he had cleaned his mouth, you know, if you lick in that soup, you steal. You clean your mouth. Who stole soup as a child? Or meat, not soup. Why will you steal soup? It's not soup, it's meat. Just go to the pot and just pick meat. And the thing is that you won't eat the full meat. You cut it half and leave half. I don't know who you are leaving half. Or when you're stealing sweet, you eat the sweet half and tie the other part. I knew the... I, I knew this, um, you know, when we were growing up as children, there was this woman that used to sell sweets and biscuits. You know those sweets then that they used to just... So there was this house here. She, they say she used to cut the sweet. She'll bite. Then I'll wrap it back and keep to sell. 
So one day, her, her madam was beating her. That's the first time I saw them rubbing pepper inside someone's bomb every part of the person's body. Because, oh my God. Because they said, still. But now I see sweets so that are like half, they are not full. I'm now wondering, maybe she did not lick the sweet though. But the mother did not know that manufacturing problem can cause a sweet to be half. And they've been beating the child. Okay. I don't know if you got it. The people that got it were laughing. So where was I? So, you find out that, uh, where was I? <laughs> eh? eh? It's not sweet. <laughs> eh, David, God bless you. So David, see how you tell story, you will not remember. So David now looked outside. And after he finished cleaning his mouth, that's how uh, the prophet came later and now talked. See, see my point now. This is what breaks my heart. God forgave David. Please always know, forgiveness and punishment are two different things. Forgiveness, that is, and consequences are two different things. You will ask God for forgiveness, God must forgive you. He is a forgiving father. Your forgiveness, what forgiveness is about? It's about a relationship with him. But you see, the punishment part is so that you will know what happens when you do wrong. It's the same thing with your children. Check your children out. You tell your children not to lie. Your child lies. You, your child says, mommy, sorry. You say okay to your child. But did you still flog the child? Yes. So the child still got the spanking. Even though the child has said sorry. That is the thing with God. And that was what happened with David. And the Bible says, what happened? He's, he's, he, he, he did his own in secret. But his son, Absalom, now did uh, now try to take the kingdom from him. First of all, tried to take the kingdom. Made the father run around in the mountain. Became second son, King Saul. Made him run around in the mountain like someone that was homeless. He did not do him. While the father was running around, he went to the top of the roof. Carried all his father's concubines and slept with them publicly. Amnon did not stop. Is it the Amnon that raped his sister, uh, half sister? And this were things God said was going to happen. Please, let us be very careful the decisions we take in 2021. There are people connected to us. And for everything you do, remember that child, that innocent baby, that innocent child. Sins will multiply. Papa taught us that in supernatural parenting. When the Bible says, uh, be fruitful and multiply in Genesis. He says, the Bible did not say what to be fruitful and what to multiply. So it means everything, both your weaknesses and strengths, will be fruitful, will multiply. God forbid that that life you have been living, that it will multiply in your children. If you smoke one pack of cigarettes, your children will do Igbo, do all of them, do everything. God forbid that the things you are doing and you are begging God to remove from your life will multiply in their lives. Raise your hand and say, oh Lord. Say it loud, oh Lord. My weaknesses will not multiply in the life of my children. Can someone say, oh Lord, help me. Help me in 2021. I will be careful with the decisions I take because I understand there's a generation next. There's a generation connected to me. Rise up on your feet. Just rise up. Say, oh Lord. Oh Lord. I will not take decisions that will disconnect me from you. I will not take de decisions that will disconnect me from you. Help me, Lord. 2021, I have a discerning heart all the way with you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, can someone shout aloud, Amen.